Were you ever mistreated or hurt? Have you ever felt insecure, jealous, unfulfilled, angry? Did it lead you to accept love in twisted forms, to pray to God that he could release you from the hurt? Did you ever feel the desire to bathe in light, to relish in its warmth as it washes away your pain and leaves you to hope you could find something more? If you've answered yes to my questions, there is a high chance that Golden Age by Ethel Kane is one of your favorite artworks or will soon be. Today, let's dive together in Golden Age, the second EP of Aiden Aidonia she released under the name Ethel Kane. Buckle up, because Golden Age is going to take us on a journey of soft, ethereal music, toxic, romantic relationships, painful introspection, and vengeful growth. Ethel Kane is one of the best storytellers of our generation. If you clicked on this video, I am pretty sure that you are familiar with some, if not all, of her work. She started releasing music through other names before settling on the name Ethel Kane and releasing Carpet Bed, Golden Age, Inbred, and Preacher's Daughter. I already covered the story of Preacher's Daughter on this channel, and soon we will get to dive into Perverts, her new album coming up in January. And when I tell you I cannot wait, I cannot wait. I used the music app Deezer, and on my rap I saw that I was the top 17 Ethel Kane listener. <laughs> so when I say I'm a fan, I'm a fan. And so before enjoying Ethel Kane's new project, I thought that it would be a good idea to make a deep dive into her older ones. Hi everyone, I'm your host Leo. I post music reactions and deep dives. I am focusing on women in rock, metal and alternative music. If this sounds like your thing, feel free to subscribe and activate the bell because it greatly supports my channel. And if you want me to cover more EPs or albums in this really thorough way, feel free to leave a comment with what you want me to cover and why you love it. And now let's get started. First, some background on Golden Age. When I did my research, I didn't find as many infos as I did on Preacher's Daughter. Like, I found zero videos on the topic on YouTube. I don't know if I didn't do my research properly, but it was harder to find material. Although they are not officially part of the Ethel Kane lore, the Golden Age and Inbred EPs are giving us a lot of clues and insight on the psyche of the characters we were introduced to in Preacher's Daughter. As Hayden explained it, Ethel Kane is part of her in many ways, so her personal story bleeds into the character. Inbred and Golden Age are personal, but we can still use them to understand better the themes that are in Preacher's Daughter and the future works that are about to come out in this series. I don't listen to the full Golden Age EP very often, because to me it's the kind of music I need to be very calm and focused to appreciate, like when I'm laid down or really relaxed and I can put my full attention to the song. They make me feel like I am floating, like I'm alive, like I have some low, warm flames in me, which is interesting that this is the reaction that it can put into the listener through the ethereal sounds because this EP is retelling a very dark story. It's talking about an abusive relationship, feelings of self-doubt, jealousy, and so on. But to some extent, I feel like all of us can relate to parts of the story or the feelings that it is conveying. It's kind of like being taken by a gentle hand to walk through some ugly parts of yourself. Hayden told Underground Underdogs, I split Golden Age into two separate aspects, sonic and emotional. So in this video I'm going to talk a bit about what makes the songs so special sonically, what she's expressing and exploring in the lyrics, and you'll see there is a consistency with what the character of Ethel Kane is experiencing in the lore. When it comes to the sonic inspirations of the album, here's what Hayden had to say back when the EP was released. I wanted it to be my last run of straight ethereal dream pop before I moved into the classic rock country alternative sound of my album. So I drew inspiration from a lot of my favorite dreamy artists, Enya, Kai Kai, Nicole Dolganger, Daughter, Clams Casino, with a splash of an edgier sound like Tittle Fight, who so graciously allowed me to sample their music on Hand at the Wall. Regarding how this EP can feed into the story of Ethel Kane, let's keep in mind what Aiden had to say. Ethel Kane is the unhappy wife of a corrupt preacher, a trope I saw firsthand plenty of time growing up, dreaming of running away and living her life to the fullest. We have many things in common and she's always been my out. 
we both just want to be rock stars. And here is what she had to say in a Tumblr post. I always say Golden Age and Inbred don't fit into the trilogy, but they honestly do in a way. Ethel Kane isn't me, but she is in a way. Those EPs are just my experience from when I was younger, so they're hers in a way too. Everything moving forward will have an actual story that's tied it together, but those two EPs do fit in it in a way. So I'm going to be a bit liberal in my interpretation of the lyrics, but I'm still going to stick to the lyrics and to what Hayden had to say in order to paint a clear picture of the storylines explored in Golden Age. And we can keep in mind that she is giving us clues about the characters of the preacher's wife and the preacher's daughter. Because Golden Age is retelling us the story of a woman who is going through pain and introspection after being left by a man she loved despite their abusive relationship. And we are also following her thoughts as she is yearning to escape her unfulfillment and poor sense of self-worth. This is just a very small side note, but Golden Age, so it is the second EP of Ethel Kane under this alias, after she signed a publishing deal with Prescription Songs. And diving into her earlier work is really making me realize the importance of preserving physical media, because some of the the tracks that she put as bonus on these EPs are only available in the physical versions. And of course you can find them on YouTube, but that's precarious and unauthorized publication of media isn't assured to last forever. So I checked a little on the internet if I can find the CD, which I am so willing to buy, but holy moly, the only thing that I found where I could buy the CD was a platform, Homie Shit Mag, where you can buy the CD for $750. That's insane. So anyway, if you have the CD and you want to sell it, I am really open, but otherwise I'm just going to do my own CD, I think. Now let's dive into Golden Age, song by song, lyric by lyric. The EP starts with the song Sunday Morning, a song that she musically and literally references in American Teenager. Sunday Morning is a dreamy track with languorous vocals that you barely understand at first and ambient sounds of birds. The song lightly gains in strength as it is progressing and to me it musically feels like waking up. It's almost like listening to someone wake up slowly on a weekend, which calls back to the title of the track. Sunday Morning introduces us to the story of a woman in an abusive relationship, a pattern that sadly is not rare in religious community, and we know that Ethel Kane loves this theme. Swaying softly, street lights glowing through my window, trying on each dress I bought for you. Do I look pretty when I ask you to hit me? The abuse is immediately obvious. We have a protagonist who seems anxious to get the validation of her partner. She seems to be needing external approval and ready to change herself for that, hinting at her lack of self-determination confidence and identity. A theme that we will find again on the other songs of the EP. Hands like barbed wire wrapping around my throat, making me cry like I told you I wanted in the car on the long drive home. Baby, we're alone now. The character accepts the abuse from her lover. Sunday morning. Everything hurts except for you. This EP starts to build up the importance of the theme of religion in the work of Ethel Kane. And I don't think that it's too big of a stretch to say that this song is referencing the Christian tradition of attending church on Sunday morning. And so I like to interpret these lyrics in two ways. First, we can literally take the words in the context of a song where the woman is singing to her abusive partner. He hurts her, but she projects this hurt on everything else because it can't be her lover hurting her, it must be the world. And the second way that I personally like to interpret these lyrics is through the idea that our protagonist is confiding to God or Jesus as she is in church and she is finding comfort and release of her pain in it. And I like thinking I'm no different from you. When I go home at night, I think about the ways that I can get out of the hole you've got me in. Again, this woman here is showing her lack of sense of identity. She is trying to find some of herself in her partner, even if it has to be in his flows. This can be a comfort at first for a lost character, but this can also leave her vulnerable and easily lead her to a situation when it's too much and the abusive partner goes too far. A theme that is heavily present in Preacher's Daughter. You've still got time waiting on the other side You'll still be alright if you just make it to the other side. You'll still be alright 
even after all this time. Here we seem to be in a kind of pep talk of the character. After realizing that she needs to get out of this relationship, she finds herself in the anguish too many people trying to leave an abusing relationship find themselves in. They're insecure and scared and they are trying to think that they are going to be okay. They're wondering if they should leave after all this time, if it's not their fault. And here she's telling herself that yes, she's going to be okay. Sunday morning, nothing hurts. Not even you. She is not with her partner anymore. I said that musically the songs feels like waking up and we leave this literally as waking up on a Sunday morning, but I like to draw the parallel that getting out of an abusing relationship feels like waking up. The song is slow, but so is this process of leaving an abusive partner or being left by them, but realizing that you're going to be okay on your own. So Sunday morning to me in many ways is a beautiful, hopeful track. We then keep going with the song Casings. Casings is a very soft track that is dominated by a hip hop beat that highly contrasts with the vulnerability of the lyrics. The song follows the confused questioning of a woman whose partner is not fully committed to her. Our character is lost, insecure, wondering what she doesn't have, what she hasn't done well enough, what is not right about her, and how it could be the cause of her partner not choosing her. I really like this song because I find it really raw and I think it dives deep into the insecurities that we can all feel when a person that we love is choosing someone else. A sense of puzzled jealousy is habiting our character, who is obsessing over this other girl who we aren't even sure exists. Am I not good enough for you? Is there something wrong with me? You say don't cry, you know you're mine. Baby, don't you lie to me. Focusing on the lyrics of this first paragraph is what started to make me question if this other woman was real or not. Am I just not what you want? Am I just not what you need? Is there someone who has your heart that keeps you gone away from me? So I paid close attention to the lyrics and to me it doesn't sound like there is actually another girl. I am wondering if we are not just faced with a character who does not comprehend why her partner does not commit to her the way she needs and who is spiraling into an insecure and painful imaginary scenario. Because maybe the only reason he wouldn't commit to her is because there would be another better person. Is she prettier than me? Is her skin softer than mine? Can she give you what I can't? The things I cry for every night. I love this part because we are in the spiral going on in her head. And many of us can identify to that. Either witnessing or imagining the person you love could prefer someone else is very painful. Comparing yourself, trying to find reasons why the thing this person has that you do not and you could try to get. So it might get you the love of the person that you want. Is it something in how she moves when you're undressed inside her house? Does she smile the way I do when she has you in her mouth? Insecurity and jealousy are uneasy feelings. Jealousy especially is raw and it makes us very vulnerable, but it also tells us a lot about ourselves. I think about you every day because I love you more than I thought I could. And now that you're gone, I want to die because I don't hate you like I know I should. Here we have a hint that her partner is actually not good to her and she should move on more easily because she could have reason to not like him. So I'm wondering if we are not continuing the story of Sunday morning and this could actually mean that in Sunday morning the character was left by her abusive partner. Was I not good enough for you? Was there something wrong with me? I just cry by myself at night but you'll never know and you'll never see. Here we delve into the painful feeling of having an entire galaxy of feelings and stories blooming in you because of another person, but knowing you'll never be able to share it with them because they don't care. By the way, let me know which track of this EP you prefer and don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss my analysis of Inbred. The EP keeps going with the song Lilies, which has a very heaven-like quality to it. It's interesting to me because in Preacher's Daughter, the refer References to religion are very literal, whether it's through the themes of the lyrics, the characters, or the numerous preaches that we hear in the songs. And here in Golden Age, I think that it's more the ambiances of the songs that are bringing this religious church-like feeling. I looked up what lilies mean in the language of flowers. I don't think that Ethel Cain like choose a flower just like this. So lilies symbolize purity, femininity, 
fertility and therefore renewal. So I think this is a clue that our character is seeking through her romantic relationship a sense of cleansing but a fear of being stuck. The sort of unattainable purity of the lilies called back to how she compares her partner in the song to an angel she wants to reach even though she thinks that if she could touch them she would only spoil them. Tell me I'm no one else but yours. Watching me undress, standing in the door, wedding doves and leather gloves and all the things you're made up of. What a wondrous thing to be in love. The character is expressing her desire to completely abandon herself in her partner. The reference to wedding doves and leather gloves highlights the duality of an abusive partner. The character feels felicity in love, which gives her the illusion that she has found her fulfillment, despite the fact that this quest leads her into toxic relationships. If we're considering that here we are talking about the preacher's wife, we can tell that she's very similar to her daughter. You're like an angel nothing can touch you but I want to hold you want to love you you're like an angel I can't come close to you you know my weakness but you don't know what I'd do the sounds of the songs on the EP feel like you have something that you cannot grasp which to me perfectly mimics this feeling that you have in religion with the quest of God or the desire to be fully known by someone in a relationship it remains quite unattainable and here in the chorus she is literal with this phenomenon referring to angels you're such an angel and I'm gonna hurt you I know I'm gonna lose you, but God, I don't want to. We also understand here how the character is idealizing her partner, but she also mentally closes herself into a kind of fatalistic abandonment. In many ways, she doesn't feel like she has power over her own destiny, which goes back again to this idea of being a child of Cain, being doomed by your roots and knowing that you cannot escape some kind of fate that is waving down on you. Lilies grow all over the room, and when you come inside, they bloom. There is nothing that I want but you. Tell me, can I be seen through? Our character sees her partner as a beautiful salvation she is unworthy of. And here she expresses her fear of being truly seen. You're like an angel, nothing can touch you, but I wanna hold you, I wanna love you. You're like an angel, I can't come close to you. You know my weakness, but you don't know what I'd do. Here we have something that is similar to the storyline of Preacher's Daughter, where she references several times that she is capable of doing terrible things. Think about the lyrics, I'm just a child, but I'm not above violence. I've killed before and I'll kill again. But this is a part of her that she is not willing to share with her partner. To me, this song in many ways calls back to the sweet relationship to the preacher's daughter and Willock Bai, where she felt like she was the one who was too dark and not good enough for him, and she was bewildered by the beauty of their love. Maybe in ways it's easier to be with a partner who is worse than you and won't try to see through you, because enduring other pains is easier than being seen in your entire beauty and hideousness. The EP follows with the song Head in the Wall. In the song, Ethel Kane paints a picture of a woman going through emotional turmoil after ending a relationship. Here is what she told to Pitchfork about coming up with the song. My head was definitely in the wall when I made it. I had been out of a really dark period of my life for about a year and a half and all at once I started to process a lot of different stuff from my childhood, from my teenagers, from the couple of years on my own as an adult, and I'd been listening to this song by Titled Fight, Head in the Ceiling Fan, which has the most beautiful guitar I've ever heard. It just struck me to my core, so I looped the guitar at the beginning of it and literally wrote Head in the Wall in 10 minutes on my bedroom floor. And the song dwells on the despair, self-harm and fear the woman is feeling. Sometimes you make me want to put my fucking head through the wall, Sometimes I wonder if I even know you at all. Fall asleep to the sound of your old rotating fan. I cut the fuck out of myself and soaked the bedsheet with blood again. She has anger and resentment towards her partner that she expresses through harming herself. I hold my head under water just to drown out the noise. It's always my fault. Girls will be bitches and boys will be boys. I know I don't need you, but I'm terrified of letting you go. Even after all the times you fucked the shit out of me while I was crying, no. Oof, these lyrics, they really make me want to cry. I have to be honest. I love how Aiden is referencing in her music how these abusive relationships between men 
and women in romantic relationships are shaped by a social status quo. As in religion, with women being blamed for the original sin, women's actions are seen as the root of evil, whilst men's actions, no matter how awful, are taken lightly and to be excused. The character knows that she can make it on her own, but she has a hard time letting go due to the dependency she developed with her partner. How am I supposed to feel good about myself when everything I do is wrong, when I'm just an ugly bitch, a fucking freak, and I don't want to go on. I don't want to leave my house because I know everybody's staring at me now. Why the hell am I alive is what they think they want to take me down. Here we are following a character that is broken and paranoid. I can't get out, can't run away. There's no escaping you now. I'm gonna die all alone, next to you in this piece of shit town. We've been cursed since the start. Jesus didn't want us, and you take all of your sins out on my body like everyone else does. Here again, the topics explored in Preacher's Daughter, the religious guilt and shaming that is so often taken out on women and girls in religious communities, literally by their husbands through abuse. Shooting up our old school when we get bored of shooting up, fuck the cops and fuck God and fuck this town for ruining us. They'll put holes in all we own and in our heads, pumped full of lead. You always told me I could only leave you once we're both dead. Again, threats in the abusive relationships. Here our character is expressing a desire of rebellion against her small town, against her religious roots. And here she paints again a good picture of how violence can also be rooted in women. Sometimes you make me want to put my fucking head through the wall. Sometimes I wonder if I ever even knew you at all. The imagery of the song is direct, banging your head in the wall directing your confusion and anger towards yourself because you don't know how to express your feelings to others, especially when they are actively hurting you. Side note, if you don't know what to watch after this video, go check out my Preacher's Daughter analysis. We then move on to Knuckle Velvet, another song that explores the themes of abusive relationships. This track is more alternative rock and we have Yao Wave on the production of the song. Here, the protagonist that we are following is at her wit's ends regarding the abuse she's going through. I'm French, so I wasn't sure what knuckle, velvet, meant. I think in French we could translate it by une main de fer dans un gant de velours. Having a harsh knuckle in a glove of velvet. So yeah, I think this is what it would mean literally in French. Again, it's a good image that symbolizes the contradiction of an abusive relationship. The hurt is delivered under the guise of love and love is unable to be expressed without violence. Nothing hurts like you do, like the way you say I love you. Leave the room half undressed. I'm saying prayers through a throttle neck. Come into the room and make me cry all over again. We go back to the image of her partner strangling her in bed. And here these lyrics also suggest the highly emotional state she finds herself in after the hurt she's injured. You come in so hard, guard me through the heart. Here I really love this image, so I tried to find the meaning of gore because I didn't know. And in English, gore can also have the sense of like being gored by an animal. So it's like having to cause an injury to someone or damage something with the horns or tucks. And I really like to take this definition because I have like a really raw vivid image of her being like torn by an animal. It's a very animalistic picture. Like a deer that would pierce through her heart, you know. Just another day and you'll still tell me you're healing. See it on your face. You won't ever change in your ways. Shed your knuckle velvet, torn on my teeth. When you're torn apart, you'll destroy me again. Here the sentence, shed your knuckle velvet, torn on my teeth, evokes the image of shedding layers of your protection, of your armor, of your outside personality when you are in a relationship. There is ugly in him, but she wants him to shed these outside layers so she, she can know him. Here we also see that our character is aware of this toxic cycle. She knows that there is no escaping it, that it's going to go back and that is going to destroy her again. Bleeding out on your sleeve, you kill me anyway but softly. With all your crying, like you did, that first night I made you spend on your own. 
You're such a child and you know it. Her partner has been guilting her and here she's calling out what all of this is. This toxic cycle that he is perpetrating is not a religious calling to be saved by your wife and be excused by the church, but it's a continuous web of childish excuses to get away with your cruelty and lack of maturity. Nothing in my heart is hoping you'll come back too cold to know what I don't have without you. When it's too much, the desire to break free becomes stronger than the fear of how you will be once you are on your own without your abusive partner. And you end up breaking this cycle. Every drop of blood is love I don't get back, baited to take the love that I gave away to save you. Again, the idea is brilliantly illustrated in this song that men can take out so much on women and romance is the bait. Like in the social status quo or in religion, the idea of marriage, tying yourself to a man and saving him is your duty as a woman. But no, she's breaking free from it here. And then the track Golden Age closes the EP. The track feels really warm, like a bright ray of sunshine, which goes really well with the title of the track. The song starts with the sound of a tape being put in a recorder, and then we have a few lines, a cappella, and the song starts. And I have, I forgot the way, I'm on my way, I'm on my way, don't wait too long, I don't want you to get tired of me, but I'll be coming along. Our character is recognizing that she still has a long way to go and throughout the EP she was expressing discontent with this ID but here she seems at peace with it. And I don't want to talk about love anymore because it's getting too much for me. All I do is waste and decline, waiting for that age of my life when I'm old and love is all that I need. Our narrator is disillusioned with love. She's growing older and looking forward to a time when love will be enough for her and she won't be feeling the pressure of pursuing more, which is a quest that only left her in a state of restlessness and disappointment. Swaying in the lamplight in my mother white gown, holding out like a dog they've yet to put down. I whore out my tears and just keep wasting the best of my years, like a beauty queen with eyes bleared. When do we feel like we are making the best out of the years we are given? I feel like it's almost impossible, and especially as a woman, because we have this excruciating social emphasis on our youth and we are told that after 30 we are done for. So leaving those years without the guidance that later is going to be okay is like having a weight of anxiety on you. So I like the comparison with the dog who is going to get euthanized because you know that in a way others society is going to figuratively kill you and waiting for it really leaves you in a state of anxiety where you just end up being actually too scared to find the energy to find what you want. Got what I wanted but it's never enough for me. Darling, don't you see? I'm so beautiful and it's wasted on me because the taste reminds me I hate what love's turned out to be. She doesn't know what to do with what she's been given. She expresses that she dislikes feeling beautiful because it is something that she could only find through her partner and not with internal validation. So after how her love relationship turned out, she doesn't want to go back to this feeling on her own. And I don't want to be in my house anymore because it just makes me sad letting in the wild with every man who brings a world of hurt with him each time he falls in my bed. Our character resents her roots and she tried to escape them through love and relationship with tumultuous men, which only ended up reinforcing her disappointment. Do you just want my blood? Am I just that damn hard to love? Because it feels like all I have is still just not enough. I guess that I'll just go outside and watch the fire and fields of gold fly farther away from me. Are we only left to contemplate the things that have slipped away from us? Will we ever feel lighter and free once we don't have the pressure of making the best out of the great things that we've got. Here our character seems ready to surrender. Again, like the character in Preacher's Daughter, this character here is looking for something higher, something more. She couldn't find a love that satisfies her hunger, so maybe it was easier to find the worst love and not try to get what she really wants. But one of these days, it'll come right back, I'll get over myself and I'll tell myself that I don't have to wait to be happy when I'm old. Oh, and that one of these days I'll find a way to fight the waves, embrace the pain, 
and paint the edges of a hundred shades of gold. Our character is ending our journey with hope for her future and hope in her growth that will allow her to be in a place where she will pursue and find her happiness. She wants to experience the brilliance of life symbolized by painting the age a hundred shades of gold. Here I like to think it also references Ethel Kane herself leaving out beautiful art which will be her heritage and hopefully leave out beauty in the world. And I have found a way, I found a way, I'm on my way, don't wait too long, I don't want you to get tired of me, but I'll be coming along. She'll take her time and once again she doesn't want to be a burden on others, she doesn't want to impose, but now she knows that she will get there. Our character is at peace with the idea of growing. You will see in the analysis of Inbred that the songs seem to be getting darker and darker. I like to think that the songs in Golden Age are getting brighter and brighter and that it is a journey of hope in ways and escaping toxic relationships. I'm also going to talk about the bonus tracks that we had on the physical CDs. The first bonus track is called Child of Cain. Here the Child of Cain references the lover she's addressing. She seems to be excusing his behavior towards her and explaining it by the fact that he's in pain because his father hurt him. So his family, his roots have betrayed him. Cain references the Bible with the story of Abel and Cain. In the story Cain murders his brother and and he becomes a symbol of treason and sin. Which is why in Dante's Inferno, the third ring of the ninth circle of hell is the place where traitors to their family go. Paint my sister chapel white, on my couch all night show me love, in whatever way it comes to you, as long as you hold me tight. The protagonist craves a connection and is willing to accept it in whatever form her partner can provide. I know your father hurt you. You say that's why God gave you me. You say I make it a little better. You say I make you happy. You say it with your finger clench, wrapped tight around my neck. Cause that's what love means to you and I ask for it, I guess. So here our protagonist is implying that the hurt his father caused him shapes his way in relationships. The one that is portrayed here seems to be tainted by dominant and submissive patterns. Again, she accepts his love through somewhat violent ways. Which goes back to this question of if you are raised with parental figures who are abusing you, how can you know how to show love differently? Or how can you know how to accept love differently? I will leave you to guess which one of these is more frequent for men and which is more frequent for women. Beautiful, sweet child of Cain, all you know is how to feel and how to deal out pain. As in the story of Cain, it is implied that her lover has an inescapable darkness put on him through his family, his father, a burden of violence that he has to perpetuate. I take my mother's scissors, carve your name into my chest, cause I think you're so amazing, cause I think that you're the best. And the way you hurt me softly brings back such sweet memories of how the angels in my room and I would play when I was free. And if I try hard as I can, I think that I can make believe that what we have is really love, cause what else could it even be? Our character is ready to do crazy acts of devotion and she abandons herself in a passionate addiction to her partner. The chorus implies that the twisted way her partner is showing love to her is bringing her back memories because she is finding a sense of comfort. Recalling her childhood, we understand in a way that she may have suffered as a child Therefore, hurt is familiar to her and brings her discomfort. This would also imply that Child of Cain could refer to our song protagonist as her youth's burden taught her twisted ways of being loved, leaving her with a poor sense of self-worth and an inclination to accept abuse. In ways, the angel line reminds me of hard times because in this song it is implied that the preacher's daughter has suffered sexual abuse at the hands of her father. And I don't know, this idea of having been abused in the past, but it's what you know and it's familiar and it brings you comfort. This reminded me of hard times. Let me know what you think about that, please. It's be impossible to live without you here with me. And it doesn't even matter that with or without you, I can't breathe. Beautiful, sweet child of Cain, 
All you know is how to feel and how to deal out pain. Their relationship is twisted and abusive, but she cannot live without it. Again, here Ethel Kane masterfully depicted how love and pain can be twisted. The second and last bodice track of Golden Age is Selby Wall. I absolutely love the guitar loop on this song, you have no idea. Selby Wall dwells into themes of revenge, self-empowerment and ultimately finding strength and liberation from a destructive situation. I don't know what Selby Wall references. When I looked it up, I found a church and a village in the United Kingdom, but if it is a specific place in the US, let me know in the comments. There comes a point in every girl's life where she just wants to go fucking feral, take a man between her hands and rip that motherfucker's limb from him. T. I'm kidding. And every time I let you fuck me, I think about how easy it would be to take your life away from you, which I'd never do unless you force me to. Our character is expressing a deep desire to get revenge on her partner. But here she's also realizing that she has a power she didn't know she had. She too could hurt him. And the internal conflict that it creates in her is highlighted in the last line of the verse. You never tell me I'm pretty. You just say you like my tits, and every time I cry you say, don't be a little bitch. But I'm still stupid and in love, and I'd still let you fuck me till I'm coming blood. Here's another sneak peek in their relationship. Her partner objectifies her and dismisses her feelings, but she is still willing to accept his love in the violent ways that he provides. But baby, one of these days I'm gonna crack and cut you up with a rusty saw in my daddy's shed and bury the pieces out back. Damn. Lie on your grave and masturbate and think of all the things we could have been. Cause baby, if you fuck me over, I'll make sure that you can't do it again. Again here, the character's underlying anger and desire to get revenge is highlighted. And she's even fantasizing about brutally hurting her partner. Masturbating on the grave is a graphic image, but to me it hints at the release that such thoughts are giving her, but also the sense of satisfaction that she feels when she's thinking about the relationship ending, but also the sense of satisfaction she has when she is imagining that she could break free from the relationship. There comes a point in every man's life where he gets the need to destroy, some sickness in his guts that started growing when he was just a little boy. And all the time you bruised my throat and pulled my hair until it broke, and held me down and fucked me till I was on the brink of death. Because when you fuck, you fucked until there's nothing left. So here she makes a parallel with the first Ferris press, this time explaining the internal patterns that men are made to feel. Or they feel due to what we often justify socially as it being their animalistic instincts. But these excuses only end up in them being more violent and getting away with it. But in this story, people get hurt and these people are often women. You never tell me I'm pretty, you just say you love my ass and you go on and on about some girl that you fucked in the past. You're such a man, I bet that I could fuck her better than you can. Her partner keeps hurting her, this time psychologically, by talking about a girl that he was on in his past, leaving the protagonist to fixate on this girl that she imagined she could be better to. And I saw her downtown and asked her out, went to her house and we fucked in her bed. She's sweeter than you'll ever be when I give her kisses between her legs. You don't deserve such pretty things when all you do is shoot to kill. She'll love me and I'll love her better than you could. I promise you I will. She then becomes involved with this woman and she compares her to the treatment that her previous boyfriend was giving her, insisting that she is sweeter and deserving of affection. This new lover represents a path towards healing from the toxic relationship and self-discovery for our character. And baby, I told you one of these days, I swore I was gonna crack, that I'd take you from your crying mother and I'd never give you back. She and I lie on your grave and masturbate and think of all the things we'll do now that we've moved on, now that you're gone, now that we know we're better off without you. Here the character is expressing her determination to move on and to get away from this toxic relationship, from this toxic man. She rejects the hurt he made her endure and affirms her desire to be happy. Overall, Golden Age is a dreamy exploration 
of introspective hurts and feelings of disappointment with life, yearning for more and finding scraps of release and distraction in codependent, abusive romantic relationships. Ethel Kane explored the journey of a character who accepts love in the form of abuse just because she wants to get it from her partner and she has this low sense of worth. She hints throughout the songs at the causes of why this character is this way and why her partner is violent with her. Everything being rooted in their respective upbringing that are tainted by brutality and chaos. And she also retells the way the character breaks free from these toxic ties both musically and lyrically. Overall, Golden Age is a beautiful journey and I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you had a good time watching this video. If you did, please leave it a like and share it with a friend who loves Ethel Kane. Let me know what you think about Golden Age and which one is your favorite track. Also, which track are you most excited about on Perverts? And finally, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the inbred deep dive and when I cover her album once it comes out. It would be too bad to miss that, right? I was your host Leo, this was Golden Age by Ethel Kane, and I will see you very soon.